Hi, and welcome back to Columbia Physics Preceptor Television. Today we'll be talking about magnetic fields. Now earlier in the course, we learned about fields in the instance of electric fields. Electric fields were caused whenever we had just uh, electric charges sitting at rest. Around the charge would be a field pointing either towards the charge or away from the charge, depending on if it was positive or negative. Magnetic fields arise when you slightly change the picture. When that charge begins to move, it will have a magnetic field around it. Pretty much all the magnetic fields we see in day-to-day -day life are caused by moving charges. Anytime you have a current flowing through a wire, you have electrons carrying that current, thus moving charge, and there's, an, there's a magnetic field around the wire. Uh, the only case in which you don't get magnetic fields from moving charges are in the cases of subatomic particles, but we won't be talking much about that today. Probably the most common insta er, instance of a magnetic field is a bar magnet. You've probably seen these in previous science classes. It's just a bar of metal, usually iron or nickel, with a north pole and a south pole. And you know that depending on uh, the orientation of the magnet uh, and maybe magnets around it, magnets will either attract or repel. Uh, this, ha this is due to how the magnetic field lines come out of the magnet. Usually they'll start from the north pole and go around to the south pole. This probably looks a lot like uh, how some of the electric field lines acted when we had two different charges on a single set of paper. But in, this, in the case of the electric field, you were able to isolate a positive and a negative charge. If you cut what's called a dipole in half, that's just a positive and negative charge separated by some distance, you're able to get down to a fundamental electric charge, either positive or negative. In the case of a magnet, if we cut this bar magnet in half, we can't just have a north pole or a south pole. We'll just have smaller bar magnets, each with a north pole and a south pole. Uh, this means that any time we have a magnetic field, it's caused by either a dipole, and that the field lines must always curl around so that there's no, uh, no starting or ending point to magnetic field lines. Today, we're going to measure something that's a little bit like a bar magnet, only in a slightly different configuration. Our magnet today will be a bar magnet combined with what's called an electromagnet, curled around into a, a C shape, so that here we have a north pole and here we have a south pole. Remember I had said that magnetic field lines go from the north pole to the south pole, so across what's called the gap of this electromagnet, we'll have a rather uniform magnetic field and also a very strong magnetic field. In order to change the strength of this field, there will be some coils of wire around the iron that makes up the magnet. And we can control this using a power source. By changing the current that flows through the coils around the magnet, big I, we can change the strength of the field in this gap. It's this field that we're going to try to measure. And we're going to do this by two ways. The first way is using uh, a force balancing method. On top of the magnet, we'll have uh, kind of like a seesaw. On one end, this seesaw will have a small pan in which you can place light washers and pieces of metal. You'll know the weight of those pieces of metal using a scale in the room here. This will exert a force, mg, downwards on one side of the seesaw. On the other side, you'll have a bar, a metal bar through which current flows, say a current small i. Remember I had said that magnetic fields are caused by moving charges. Well, they can also act on moving charges. If we have a current flowing through a magnetic field, and this magnetic field B here is caused by the large electromagnet, this will feel a force in the downwards direction. Now for right angles, it, normally this would go by the, the uh, cross product, so you'd uh, have to use the right hand rule and find the sign of the angle between small i and b. But in the case of this seesaw, everything is in right angles to each other. You'll have a force F equals I times the length of this bar L, which you'll have to measure, 
times the magnetic field B. You'll want to balance this force with the gravitational force and do this for uh, different values of M and different values of little i. This will allow you to plot a straight line and the slope of that line will be proportional to the magnetic field going through this magnet. What you can then do is change the current big I and find how the uh, magnetic field varies for different, er, how the magnetic field varies at a few different values of I and find how the magnetic field varies uh, as a function of I. The other way to find the magnetic strength of the magnetic field is by using Faraday's law of inductance. You may remember from class that Mr. Faraday says the EMF around a coil of wire is equal to the number of turns in that loop of wire times the change in flux per time. There's actually a negative sign there, I think. Um, remember, magnetic flux is the number of field lines going through the area of that wire loop. So here we can have a loop of wire with a few turns around it, N, and then wire leads coming off. The number of field lines going through this loop, if we increase the number of field lines, will increase the flux. If we decrease the number of field lines, we'll decrease the flux. So by moving this loop from an area of very high magnetic field to an area of low magnetic field, we're reducing the number of lines and changing the flux in time. What you'll be using is what's called a search coil. It'll be just a loop of wire with a certain number of turns and you'll start it or start the coil inside the magnet and then pull it out. Or if you choose to do so, you can start with the coil outside of the uh, bore of the magnet and then place it inside, thus changing the flux through the magnet. You'll have a set of circuitry hooked up to the search coil which will integrate the amount of charge that flows through the coil as a function of time. Remember this EMF is going to cause a current to flow through the circuit. There will also be an amplifier so you will have to take into account various uh, numerical factors such as the gain of the amplifier, the resistance of the circuit, and while you, we, it's very difficult to measure these things uh, outright, what you can do is calibrate your search coil using something of known magnetic field. In this case, you'll be using a solenoid. A solenoid is simply many, many loops of wire with a very uniform magnetic field flowing through it as a function of current. You'll have a solenoid hooked up to a power source and by turning it on and off you can see how the flux through the search coil changes uh, and you, can ca you, you should be able to calculate the magnetic field and the amount, the amount of magnetic flux generated by this air core solenoid. Uh, just some safety issues for this lab. These magnets, or especially the very large uh, mag electromagnet, can be very, very strong. So what I, would, I would advise you to take off any watches or any sort of steel jewelry that you might be wearing. Um, also, the power sources in this lab are very, very uh, strong. They're putting out a few amps of current and electricity at that level can almost be dangerous or it, it is dangerous. So I would advise you to power down everything before touching any components of the experiment. Uh, that's about all I have to say. Let me know if you have any questions and have fun.